Hello and welcome to this PVLib Python tutorial. In this video, I will show you how you can uh, use external data and um, format it, process it, to then use it in your PVLib model. Um, I'm using data from the uh, PVGIS, which I showed you in the last video, but you can basically apply the following steps to any um, data source you like, as long as you have the global horizontal, the direct normal, and the diffuse horizontal irradiance. Um, in this data set, we also have um, the wind speed and the temperature. If you don't have this data, um, PVLib will um, provide you with default values. Um, when you run the model uh, chain. So I'm going to open up my um, IDE and I create a new file and um, save it in the same directory as I have the, um, the data. Call it pvgisprocessing.py. So I'm enlarge this a little bit. Okay, and for the data processing, I'm using pandas. So I import pandas spd. And um, the data I have is a typical meteorological year. So I'm calling my uh, data frame tmy. And I read in from CSV pd.read CSV. And um, my file is actually called pvgis cologne cathedral. I'm just going to copy this over. Dot CSV. So if I try to run this, I actually get an error because uh, pandas is not able to handle these, these first rows here, which are kind of off. So I'm just going to skip those by saying uh, skip rows equals 16. Now we can have a first look by printing our data and run the code. So we're um, starting with the, with the column headers, which are um, automatically included. And then we have the data. And at the end of my file, there's the legend, which explains the abbreviations of the column names. So we're going to get rid of this as well. Um, I have a data with an hourly resolution. So for one year, hourly data is 8,760 data points. So I'm just going to uh, include uh, these rows by saying n rows equals 8,760. So I'll run this again. And this leaves me with the data from January 1st, midnight until December 31st, 11 p.m. Now I still have some columns that um, I actually don't want to use in my, uh, for my PV model. So I'm going to define the uh, columns that I want to use by saying use calls equals, and then I provide a list with the columns I want to use. First one is the time, uh, UTC. Next one is the temperature. T2M, the temperature at 2 meters actually. Then I have the global horizontal irradiance. Um, the direct. Uh, no, no, no. B for beam, which is the direct normal, uh, irra normal irradiance, not horizontal. And then the last irradiance is the diffuse horizontal irradiance. And then we also have the wind speed at 10 meters, which we want to include. Perfect. On this, yes, looking good. Um, last step we want to do is that we want this time here to be our index. So we say that the index column is the first one, or in Python, the zeroth um, column. Now we can also plot um, our data, plot, and we increase the fig size equals 16, 9. All right, let's run this. 
Nice. So we have um, our data from January to December. What we see here is that the, the time is still um, oddly formatted. So we want to bring it into a nice format. So if you have your, your data from one year, you can do uh, this step by overriding um, the initial uh, index with the formatted date time index. Uh, so we say tmy.index equals pd dot to date time and then I provide the original index to this function. Now um, oh yeah right I have to also provide the format which um, the index is in and uh, it starts with the year followed by the month right uh, small m then we have the day and then we have the hour and the minutes okay now it should work and what you see here for my data set or the the one i get or we get from um PVGIS for the typical methodological year is that you have a collection of months from different years which uh, combine make up the year. So um, the, the time steps in the beginning here actually reflect the actual year the data is from. So when we convert this data set to, di to, to date time, we are left off with this uh, oddly looking um, time series, but of course we want to go back and have this one. So um, in my case here, we are actually overriding um, the, uh, the index in a slightly different way by saying tmy.index is a new index which we create with pd.date range. And we start, since it's a reference year, we can take whatever year we want here. So we say 2021. January 1st um, at midnight and it ends 2021 December 31st at 11 p.m. and um, in this case, we're also going to define the frequency, which is hourly. So we say frequency equals H. Now run it again. Perfect. Now we're back at uh, what we uh, saw in the beginning, but this time we have a nicely formatted uh, index here on the X axis showing us the year 2021. The last thing we need to do in order for us to use this data in the PBLIP uh, library is to change the column names to the names that PVLIP, uh, or better say, the, the run uh, model um, of the model chain would expect. So it finds the, the corresponding data we need. Um, we're going to do this by um, overriding the, the column names, tmy columns equals um, first the temperature which in um, pvlib is temp air next for the global horizontal irradiance we have the ghi for the direct normal irradiance we have DNI. For the diffuse horizontal irradiance, we have DHI. And the wind speed is wind speed. Run again. Perfect. Now we have a proper index and we have column names that um, PVLIP can actually handle. Last thing we want to do is to save our process data into a new file. And we do that by saying tmy.2csv. And I'm going to define this as pvlib cathedral.csv. 
as usual. Yeah. All right, run, save, cool. Now in my folder, I have the um, PVLib Cathedral data, and I'm going to go back to the um, code we've been working with before. And I'm going to take out the clear sky um, part, which is commenting it out. And now I'm going to include the new CSV file we just created by saying tmy equals pd.read CSV. And it was pvlib cathedral.csv. So what we also have to do here is define the index column because otherwise it would just create a new um, new one, but we also already have one. It's the first one. And the second thing we need to do is to again convert the index to daytime because that's not saved in the CSV. So tmy.index equals pd.2 date time tmy.index. Um, and then we can use the tmy data instead of our clear sky and uh, run this code. Nice. So um, this is actually the, um, the AC uh, energy yield um, I get from my location for the typical meteorological year with the PV system we defined um, before. So this uh, is much more volatile than um, the uh, clear sky model. And um, well, to get a better um, impression, um, you could uh, for example, um, re, uh, resample the data. Uh, I'm just going to do that real quick as well. So I'm just going to take the model chain results AC. I'm going to say resample. I'm going to resample for a month, which is uh, in this case capital M. Let me double check. And I'm going to take the sum here uh, for this month. So if I just run this uh, part down here, I'm getting um, kind of like the, the resampled data for the summation of the energy yield for each uh, month. So we see that in January, February, November, December, I have lower um, energy yields. And in the summer month, I have higher energy yields. So that's what I would expect for my um, PV system here in, in Cologne. Um, but that's it for this video. Uh, if you ran into any issues so far, let me know. Also, if you have any remarks, questions, comments uh, on what I showed you so far, feel free to comment below as well. Till next time, stay curious, be kind, and we meet again in another video. Bye.